right, this is the first time getting the Mark 7.5 Golf R out on the track. I'm super pumped to get it out there and see how it performs. Before we get it out on the track, though, we had to do a couple of upgrades back at the shop. We're going to do a brake upgrade with a prototype set of brakes, flush in fresh brake fluid. Before we do our rear brakes, I have to put the rear brakes in the service position. So because it has an electronic parking brake, you have to use a scan tool and retract the piston. And it should make a pretty cool noise. All right, so the brake upgrade we're gonna be doing to the Golf R is only a pad and rotor upgrade. We're gonna be upgrading to a two-piece rotor that is dimpled, and even though this one's kinda heavy, uh, should be a couple of pounds lighter. Once we get this one off, we'll weigh it. We're also upgrading to a Ferrodo racing pad. This one doesn't have a wear indicator, which is kind of a bummer, so we might just code that out. Skirt, skirt, skirt. Pretty simple upgrade. We don't have to fabricate or cut or splice or paste anything. Really our main goal here is to let our brakes do a better job of dissipating heat. Our rotor should help that a ton. Now this is actually a prototype rotor. So when the official version of the rotor comes out, this hat will be anodized and then the outer edge will have a zinc coating on it. So this looks a little different than what will be in production. Easy brake job to do, let's get at it. We're gonna start in the back, we'll do both sides in the back, and then we're gonna do the front. That was. Is it gonna come off? Woohoo! How about that? Let's weigh this and see our weight difference. I'm equally strong, so it's hard to tell. First up, our factory one. 15 pounds on the button, and our upgrade, it does feel, I'm gonna guess two pounds lighter. 13 pounds. How about that? Not a bad guess. Cool. Let's get it put on. We also are going to make sure we clean our rotor as always. Check out how dirty. So it looks clean here, right? Look at how dirty these actually are. These are a pretty fresh two-piece rotor though. Look at that. This is my stage five cut down ranch so that it fits on the caliper carrier and we can get the bolts off. These on the front of this car are a lot like the older Volkswagen's uh, rear that you had to counter hold for, uh... yeah, not strong enough. There we go. You had to counter hold the, the lock pin. So I ground it down, ground, grinded, grinded it, did. grinded it down. We'll also probably throw some Loctite on there. Wiggle our caliper off and set that right there. This is the pad we're putting on. Look at how much meat is on there compared to what's left. Now the factory ones might not have had as much to start, but we only got 20K on this car. So looks like somebody needs to learn how to drive a little bit better. If you want a step-by-step -step on brakes, especially these fronts, I think I did one on the blue R32. Tiny bit different, but pretty close. Ooh, yeah. If we didn't have this on here, people wouldn't know that it's got Golf R on it. <laughs> oh, this is heavy. Let's weigh this and see the weight differential. So here's the front original, 23.4 pounds. And, oof, our upgrade. 20.2 pounds, so a little over three pounds. That's pretty good. Go ahead and clean our new rotor. That came off of that brand new rotor, so make sure your stuff's clean. All right, let's get this guy on here. Uh, this one. There we go. We'll go ahead and load our pads up. I put a little thread locker on these bolts because you can see it had it from the factory. I'm sure Volkswagen would tell you you have to replace that bolt, but they also tell you the belly pan bolts that have thread locker on them, you need to replace them. So um, I, I think we'll be okay. How about that? I don't know if we're gonna stop any better or not, but that looks pretty awesome. Ugh. Ugh. I gotta turn the key on. There we go. Don't try that at home, kids. 
Oof. All right, so we have to now go back and reset the parking brake. Next step, what I gotta do is I gotta hop back in it and pump the brakes so that all of the rest of our calipers are pushed up against the pads and then the pads against the rotors. This might be the sketchiest part of the whole job. Oh, that was close. Close call. Oh yeah, there we go. Yes. We're going full race car this time. So when it comes to the order of flushing brakes, sometimes for some cars it really does matter, but most of the time it doesn't because all you're doing is exchanging fluid. Now when it comes to bleeding brakes, which is a different, yes, the order is vital. All we're doing is putting new fluid in. So the odds of like air getting in the system are almost zero. When you're bleeding, you're trying to get air out of the system. And if you don't do it in the right order, yes, you can leave some air behind, especially with like ABS bleeds and stuff like that. Everything's done, fluid is flushed, wheels are on. We have to torque down our wheels and then we have to drive it to do the brake pad bed in procedure. Always, always, always make sure you follow the proper bed in procedure for the brakes you're using. It will help your brakes be more better. That's like stage two professional. Okay, first time golf are on track. Let's uh, see how she does. Cool. Thank you. Okay, so coming out, you stay track left all the way through turn one. Okay. Um, of the track right there right there and stay left left up now start to cut in the apex is actually right easy through all the way out good and then we position the car track right as we enter into the uh, carousel here this is a sharp left turn and it's important to stay track left on the exit turn in is at the arrow stay wheels on the curb stay track left and now we bump this curb late Late apex here, late apex on this guy as well. So we get the car squared down the straight, get out of the rotation as quickly as possible. Stay track left here. This is a fast car, it's got a lot of power. Late apex here, and now start to open the wheel. Come all the way track left here. And I, I like to come on this gator here. This is nine on the north fork. Stay track right. The minute you see the stripe curving on the left, turn it now. Wheels on the curve at uh, five, all the way out to the edge. Now we're pointed at the one and a half. We let the car come all the way track left. And for this car, a mid corner entrance, uh, mid track exit is good. And we go all the way out to the left and a late turn in. This is a really late turn in, bump that gator, let the car come track left, and we'll see. Oh yeah, no passing on the first two. So here if we got a point by, we would pass on the right. Okay. Well, let's smell those brakes. Cooking. Uh, so, second time around, Super good. Car is very fast. The brakes are incredible. Even the instructors like this car has a lot of brakes. So I think our brake upgrade was the right move. Um, had a couple of points where it's like, mm, that's like you need to dial it back just a ton. But otherwise, super pumped, super happy.
trying to learn where I need to put the car on the track is probably the hardest part. And now we check tire pressures. 46 PSI, because they're hot. Okay, track day one complete. Uh, the car did phenomenal until we ran it super low on fuel. But I don't know if you could see this, how much it cost me per gallon, $4.83 a gallon. Brakes, outstanding. Even the instructor who you guys just saw there a second ago was like, dude, this car brakes really, really well. I feel like I've probably been a broken record on that before. Tons of acceleration good in turning uh got a little squirrely on uh, a couple of turns but she was able to settle and go um a lot of conversation about i can't believe that golf is as fast as it is so i guess we'll get it back to the shop at some point and shake it down and see how much we destroyed these brakes now we have a whole ton of stuff that we got to load back up in the golf and get home because that is what you do after one of these events so phenomenal car awesome time big ups to vir and i think we are all right, we're back at the shop. These Michelin Pilot Sport 4 S's were pretty new, but as you can see right here, we got a little bit of chunkage on our tire. I will say they held up great, and boy, when they're hot, they're super duper soft. Uh, we did make one tire pressure adjustment from the, I think it was 38 PSI, 39 PSI that the factory recommends, down to, I think, 35 with the tires cool, and that seemed to provide more grip. Really happy with how the tires did. And this one might be a little dirty because I may have uh, exited the track just a, just a little bit, like just that much. When we look at our brakes, you can see there's a lot of transfer here, right here. Um, they're obviously quite a bit different in color than they were when we put them on. And if you look like right here, that's all brake dust. And our pads really don't look like they wore down that much at all. So that's good. Or it's bad. I don't know. Maybe I didn't beat them up quite hard enough. When we look at the back, <laughs> look at the back tires. How cool is that? Look at all of this rubber that came off the tire. Looking at the brakes themselves, much like the front, you have some, some hot spots, ton of pad left, ton of brake dust floating around. All in all, we look pretty good. So pretty much what you would expect from a track day with a car like this. I think we did four sessions, maybe 10 laps a session. I am not an expert driver. I'm not a professional driver. I don't even play one on TV, really. I just tried to go out there and have a lot of fun in a car that I knew I had to drive home, which probably changes the dynamic and the way that you drive. 
Looking forward to more track days. I would probably add a DSG cooler, perhaps an oil cooler. On the long back straightaway, we got the car up to about 130 miles per hour, and that four to five shift was pretty jarring when the car was really hot. So like the last few runs, the car would get pretty warm. Got a lot of really great comments, of people that were surprised this car was as fast as it was. And again, it had more to give than I was prepared to give it. So all in all, successful day. Had a blast. Uh, big thanks to Leith Cars for having an awesome event. My buddy Jack was really the one that put it all together. So big ups to him. Awesome day at VIR. With that, I think we're out. Have an awesome day. And I'll talk to you again next time.